MMA is a sport like no other, from last minute KOs to back and forth wars, shock upsets to reigns of dominance. The fact is though that the sport may seem intimidating to those out of the loop. With the UFC diversifying its roster, new talents are emerging and taking over the top at a rapid pace, and it can be tough to keep up with all the movement. In this new series, I'll do my best to give you a rundown of each division. From the top prospects to the dominant champions and the grizzled veterans, if you are new to this fantastic sport and want to catch up quickly, then look no further. I'll only be touching on the last few years up to now as covering its entire history would make a video far longer than this one. Uh, if you like this video, don't hesitate to like and subscribe, it helps me get my videos out to more and more people. And without further ado, this is a UFC Casuals Guide to the Lightweight Division. Let's start with a recap of the last few years. Remarkably, the lightweight belt has not changed hands via champion being dethroned since Conor McGregor vacated the title in 2016. Since then, the belt has changed hands solely through vacant challenges, with Khabib Nurmagomedov being the first with a dominant decision over late replacement Awaya Quinta in 2018. As I'm sure many of you would have at least heard, the Dagestani would go on a tear through the division, submitting the previously mentioned McGregor as well as division powerhouse strikers Dustin Poirier and Justin Gaethje. For his draining wrestling style, his dominant performances likely would have continued had it not been for the passing of his father and trainer Abdulmanap. Following the win over Gaethje in 2018, the Russian would hang up the gloves inside the octagon and announce his retirement, remaining undefeated and on top as a GOAT contender. Three days. <sighs> she don't I go fight without father, but I promise her it's gonna be my last fight. And if I give my word, I have to follow this. It was my last fight. Surely a hard reign to surpass, no? Enter Charles Oliveira. The Brazilian would surge to lightweight gold following 10 years in the promotion filled with ups and downs, before a nine fight winning turnaround foreseen by no one but himself would grant a title shot at gold versus new contender Michael Chandler. Despite being dropped in the first, De Bronx would recover and starch the American in the second with the cleanest left hook you just might ever witness. The Brazilian's recoveries from the brink of defeat would be a common pattern in his following two title defenses, being dropped by Dustin Poirier in the first before winning via rear naked choke in the third. Justin Gaethje would similarly be on the cusp of victory after dropping the champion, who then returned fire with a knockdown of his own, rounding off the win with another submission. Oliveira's title resume had gained serious traction, with lightweight goat debate circulating and inevitable comparisons to Nurmagomedov in discussion. It's important to note that Oliveira was actually no longer the champion due to missing weight against Gaethje, meaning despite his win, the belt remained vacant. Though many viewed him as the rightful owner, there was another man ready to stake his claim. If you ask me, Islam's claim on gold was basically a given. Training his whole career alongside Khabib and under his father, it seemed inevitable that he would reach gold at some point. Besides a shock knockout loss early in his UFC tenure, the Russian has since been pretty much the closest thing to inhuman in the octagon. Makachev has torn through everyone ahead of him, with wins over highly touted Armand Sarukian, who we will touch on later, as well as fan favourite Kiwi Dan Hooker. The best way to describe Makachev is that he's effectively Khabib 2.0. So, if his reign is to continue, expect him to be a betting favourite due to his oppressive wrestling strong submission game, and in my opinion, understated striking ability. I personally don't see him losing his belt in the near future, but this sport is unpredictable, so let's take a look at those vying for a shot at gold on the rank ladder. The previously mentioned Poirier and Gaethje have been circling the top of the division for a number of years, each having two shots at gold. Whilst both of their striking capabilities are a threat to anyone, grappling matchups have proven to be their Achilles heel on the big stage. So personally, I wouldn't vouch for those two claiming the belt anytime soon as long as Makachev is reigning. Michael Chandler, while brilliant to watch, also suffers the same weak points grappling-wise, as well as a tendency to empty his gas tank far too early. Fourth ranked Benil Dariush continues to prove the doubt was wrong every time he fights, becoming a seriously well-rounded force as a top contender following his win over Mateus Gamrot. I also have a bit of a soft spot for him, as his knockout over Drakkar Closer was responsible for this. Oliveira may make a return with an automatic title shot due to his long reign, though it's hard to see a path to victory when watching their previous fight, but we have seen him snatch victory from the jaws of defeat before. Seventh ranked Rafael Fazeev is on my radar as a top contender to challenge for the belt next year. On a six fight winning streak, he has torn through former champion Rafael de Sanjos and 13th ranked Renato Moicano via KO. It remains to be seen whether he can withstand the wrestling pedigree of a fighter like Makachev, but the prospect of said matchup is certainly intriguing. Mentioned earlier, Armin Sarukian is in my eyes one to watch for the future. As one of the most technically gifted fighters in the roster, he was pegged as a top prospect in 2021. The Armenian proceeded to shoot up the rankings and seemed unstoppable until his recent fight with Mateus Gamrot in which he lost a narrow decision. At just 26, however, there is certainly more room to improve on an already masterful technical skill set, so expect his name headlining a poster soon. 
Terence McKinney has started to make a name for himself. A gifted striker, he has won three of his last four, including a seven second KO over Matt Frivola. A loss to the experienced Drew Dober was obviously a setback, but at just 28, he has already bounced back with a submission win since, and I only see him improving going into 2023. Unsurprisingly, Paddy Pimblet has been running the show this year with his mic skills. And although undefeated in his first three fights, his first two opponents were far from elite caliber. Jordan Leavitt was certainly a credible win back in June, but poor fight IQ in his performances, as well as a habit of leaving his chin open when engaging, leads me to believe that the hype train will probably run out of steam when faced with tougher competition. I'm sort of bending the rules a little bit with this last one, as he's not exactly a prospect anymore, more someone that's been largely forgotten by a lot of the MMA community. Gregor Gillespie remains 7-1 in the promotion, and even after suffering one of the most brutal finishes in recent memory to Kevin Lee, his bounce back against Diego Ferreira last year proved he still has the skills. If he can string some wins together next year, I can certainly see him climbing the ranks. I'll likely do a future champions prediction video at the end of the year, but here I'll give a quick rundown of how I see the lightweight division panning out. Honestly, Makachev just seems unstoppable at 155, so expect him to continue cementing his legacy by the end of the year with his wrestling and Khabib in his corner. Pound for pound number one featherweight champion Alex Volkanovski is aiming for history in February by moving up to lightweight to challenge for double gold status. Whilst Volkanovski is arguably the most well-rounded fighter in the sport today, the size difference will be a huge factor and I can see the wrestling pedigree of Makachev to be again too much. It's hard to say where Oliveira will be in 2023, but his talent leads me to believe his time near the top isn't over just yet. Expect him in title contention for at least a while. His striking is a problem for anyone, but with the most submissions in UFC history under his belt, the jiu-jitsu specialist is one of the most dangerous grapplers the sport has ever seen. I think Gaethje's number is up in terms of title contention, though his style should make you tune in regardless, earning the remarkable stat of having 8 performance bonuses in 10 fights. Win or lose, his nickname is the highlight for a reason. If you're a fan of slick boxing, then don't hesitate to watch Poirier when he next fights. His recent performance against Michael Chandler has been one of the best fights of the year, so we can only hope for more of the same going into 2023, whether that's gaining a third title shot or not. Dariush will almost certainly get his chance against Islam, and although I expect this to be a closer match than many anticipate, Makachev's wrestling still seems hard to pick against. Sarukian is the name I consider to be fighting for titles very soon, and he may well hold a belt in the future. Even with a loss against Makachev in 2019, his rapid improvement makes me think the rematch will be far more competitive, so keep an eye out for the Armenian going into the near future. Thank you so much for watching this video, I've been trying a different style of content a little bit, so uh, if you'd like to see this as a whole series with a video for each division, uh, please let me know in the comments. I'm going to hopefully start making some more long form stuff in the future. I also wanted to say thank you so much for the support on the last video, uh, it means so much to me, it's always crazy to have my third video do so well, uh, so yeah, thank you.